It's 15 years since the Freedom of Information Act was introduced. It's an act designed to give citizens greater access to information and an act also designed to promote openness and transparency in public bodies. So has it worked? Well, joining me now is our North East correspondent Richard Dowling and here in studio, Solicitor uh, Catherine Allen. Thanks very much to both of you for uh, joining us this morning. Richard, can I go to you first of all? Richard, just can you explain to me how the act works and whether or not you as a journalist think it's working? The act itself is quite simple. I mean, most uh, laws in this country, they tell us what we can or can't do. This law actually gives us the right to ask the state for information, whether the state has the information or will give it to us. That's a separate issue. But it's very simple to do. You simply contact the government department, the local authority or the body, as long as it's subject to the Freedom of Information Act, you have to put in 15 euro uh, with the request and you say, I want information relating to X. Now, they can either then release some of it to you, they can release all of it to you, or they can say either we don't have it or you're not getting it. In that case, then you have to appeal in within the body, that's 75 euro at this stage. If you're still not happy with that, you then have to go to the Information Commissioner, that's 150 euro. Now, these uh, fees were put in, I think it's generally accepted, to discourage people from making uh, freedom of information requests, particularly journalists. The present government, their plans are to reduce these fees substantially, but still to maintain those fees. What journalists have used these, uh, the FOI for is to simply to find out stories, and it's, I suppose it's important to bear in mind that the most uh, most people who use FOI are actually ordinary citizens seeking information about themselves from the Department of Social Welfare or, or uh, the HSE or that kind of body. But journalists do make up, I think it's about 20% of all uh, FOI applicants. And, Richard, and what we've done... Sorry. Sorry, Richard. I mean, just on that issue there of journalists, I mean, some spectacular stories have come out using the FOI process, haven't they? That's right, they have. Um, I, one of particular note is the John O'Donoghue, the former Keon Corley, and his expenses. That was a result of freedom of information requests. But it's not just journalists. I mean, other people are, are well able to use it. I mean, if you look at the nursing home scandal, that came about as a result of FOI requests by, uh, by politicians. So the use of FOI is, uh, can be uh, quite broad in terms of who used it. But the... Um, the effect of the Act itself can be quite restrictive in the sense of when you compare Irish FOI to FOI in other countries. I mean, I've used it in America and in the UK to get information about Ireland. Now, the information that I've got couldn't be released under Irish FOI, but it can be released under FOI in other jurisdictions. So it's one of the bizarre contradictions that uh, other countries have far more open FOI regimes than we have here, unfortunately. OK, well, let me uh, speak to Catherine Allen. Catherine, I suppose uh, the first question to ask you, can you explain exactly your, what your involvement is with FOI? Certainly. Well, in Mason, Hayes and Curran, where I work, we act for a range of different individuals that are involved in FOI. So we've acted for the Information Commissioner for many years. We also act so for... So, in, in essence, you would be advising people as to whether or not they need to release information under the FOI, well, am I correct there? Yes, or we could be advising public bodies in relation to FOI requests. We act for requesters and we've acted for people who've been making submissions okay. to public bodies. Well, what about so. Richard's point there, that it is not open enough here in Ireland, that, you know, we should follow in the steps of other countries, I maybe? wouldn't necessarily agree wholeheartedly with what Richard is saying. I mean, we definitely set the trend, certainly in Europe for FOI. We had FOI in this jurisdiction long before the UK did um, and I think most of the exemptions or the exceptions in the FOI Act would reflect similar exceptions in the UK, the US, Australia. Okay Zealand. Richard shaking his head there. <laughs> Richard come in there. No I, I have to say I don't agree entirely with that. Even just to take one example of say the UK, our closest neighbour, FOI is and has been from the very start applicable to the police forces there. It's never been applicable to uh, Angartha Siakana. Now, the plans are in the, the new uh, 2012 draft to extend it to Angartha Siakana, but in quite limited scope. It's literally just uh, procurement, HR and finance. I mean, there's none of, so, none of those restrictions in the UK or in uh, okay. Australia, the US. Let me put that back to Catherine. I mean, do you accept that really it could be a little wider? Well, Richard is absolutely right in saying that they are going to be making it broader under this new proposed legislation. Um, the Information Commissioner herself has, has said for many years that Angorda Siakona needed to be under the legislation as they are in the UK. 
um, and the way it's proposed to be ad administered is it's only the general administration records of the Gardaí that will be available. And that makes sense. I mean, you couldn't have uh, criminal investigation records available under FOI. It yeah, simply wouldn't make yeah, sense. Fair enough. Uh, Catherine, can I ask you, I mean, you've been working in this area for quite some time now. Do you think it has been effective in changing the culture of public bodies? What have you seen? I mean, I can imagine when this came in first that people were like horrified that they had to release any information. Yeah, it's really turned the culture on its head because before the introduction of the Act, it was really you had to show why you should obtain information from a public body. And it was very difficult to do it. But under the FOI Act, uh, it's for the public body to demonstrate why you should not get access to the information. And uh, that really puts the, the onus on the public body to, to step up to the mark and demonstrate why it's not available. OK, and Richard, would you feel that that is what they're doing? In some regards, yes. In other regards, uh, no, unfortunately. I mean, I think one of the main issues that has has uh, halted the, the, the move of FOI into the wider Irish culture is there's still a lack of openness. I mean, if you compare us once again to the UK, um, there are various government websites in the UK, uh, Open Data or Number 10, their own website. They will give you details of what ministers, who they're meeting, uh, what expenses they've claimed, any gifts they've given or received. And it's not just the politicians, it's their advisors as well. That information is readily available on websites in the UK. We can access it here quite freely. But if we were to get that information from uh, our own uh, government, uh, that's then a result. It would have to go through FOI, okay. resulting in costs and fees for everybody. OK, listen, we're going to have to leave there. Richard, thank you very much indeed for joining us from Limerick. And Catherine, thank you very much indeed for coming into the studio.